All right, so in this video, we're gonna make some pivot tables using Google Sheets and Looker Studio. So Looker Studio is basically renamed Data Studio. Now there are existing pivot tables in Google Sheets directly. We're not gonna use those in this particular video because number one, if you don't want to share the actual data in a spreadsheet, you just wanna share the report, this will allow you to do that in a clean and nice way. So we'll have basically our pivot table report in a completely separate place where you can share it with other people. And then your data will be sitting here separately in your spreadsheet. But in the end of the day, one of the important parts for many users to understand is to learn about concepts, not about particular tools. And what I mean by that, there are pivot tables in many different places. There are pivot tables in Google Sheets, there are pivot tables in Looker Studio, there are pivot tables in Excel, there are pivot tables in many different other places. And if you try to concentrate on the idea and just understand how pivot tables work, it doesn't really matter which environment you're in, you should be able to use pivot tables in all of those environments so long as you understand how pivot tables actually work and what they actually do. So to get started with this, let's actually start by not using pivot tables on a larger data set like this. Let's start with a small data set like this one I have on this tab called learn just so that it's clear how all of this works. So first of all, let's understand what type of data works with a pivot table. The type of data that works with a pivot table is when you have this repetitive pattern in your data. So if you look at this particular example, see I have the sales rep column and in the sales rep column, we have Isabella, then Isabella again, then Isabella one more time. And then you can see we got Olivia, Olivia repeats again. So we have the same value that repeats in this column many times. You can also look at another example in this region column where we have the same value multiple times like Midwest. So this typically is the type of data that works with a pivot table when you want to take this sort of data and summarize it. So think about this, like if I have multiple Midwest here in this region column, I might want to get the total of all the sales for all of those combined. And then the same for West to get all of the sales combined total. So if you wanna summarize this type of data, pivot tables are a great tool to get that done. So now let's try to apply it on this particular table. So in my spreadsheet, this is the tab called learn. And my spreadsheet itself is the one that's called, as you can see here, learn pivot tables. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Looker Studio. And we'll just start by creating a blank report. So the first thing we're gonna do here is connect to our Google Sheets. So I'll go ahead and click on this Google Sheets. So in this menu, it's gonna give you what files you have available. So you can see that I have this same file, learn pivot tables, which is the name of that spreadsheet. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna grab all the tabs we have in that file. So this file, see I have shortcuts, learn, data, data copy. So right now I wanna use this learn tab. So I'll go here and click on learn. And you can see here we have this use first row as headers. That refers to this first line. So it's important when you set this up that the first line you have in this data set is the actual column names, the headers. And then everything else is gonna remain the same. So I'll just go ahead and click add and that should connect to this. Add to report and we're connected. So I'll go ahead and delete whatever this is. So I'll click on this and press delete key on my keyboard and we'll start by adding our pivot table. So I'm gonna go to insert menu and under insert on top here, we're gonna have pivot table as one of the options. So there's table, that's not what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use this one pivot table. So now I just have to place that pivot table where I want this to be. So I'll just click here. You can resize this, make this bigger, smaller, it's up to you. Now by default, it will just try to automatically make 
a pivot table for you, which is okay. But we're gonna start this from scratch to understand what's actually going on. So I'm gonna go here under this column dimensions. I'll go ahead and exit out of this, click on this X. And basically now we have row dimension, we have column dimension, and then we have metric. So first of all, you want to understand what metric is before you continue doing anything else. So the way you're gonna choose a metric is by basically thinking, if this is my data, what column I'm gonna apply some function on. So for example, if I wanted to get the total for Midwest here, that would be something like this. You would sum this and this and this. So you would apply a sum function over the sales amounts to get a certain total. Or maybe you want to get the average sales, then you'll do average of that. Or it's possible that you just want count of some sort. So you'll do count of these things to know like how many. So first we wanna basically figure out what column we're gonna use for the function and what function we're gonna apply to it. So if I want to get total sales, then I need to sum sales amounts. So that tells me that this is my metric column. So the column with a function would be the one with metric. So I'm gonna go back here and right here, see right now it says record count, which is not what I want. I'm gonna click on that and we're gonna switch that to that sales column. And by default, it will basically just choose a function. You'll see how on the left here next to sales, it just says sum. So it automatically picked some function. Now you can change that. So I can click on that little sum and it gives me this little pen icon. So I'll just click on that and you can switch this to different functions like average, for example. So if I do average, now we're gonna get average sales instead of sum of sales, or maybe you want the max, meaning the highest number or minimum and so on. I'm gonna go back to sum because I wanna sum these. And for right now, if you just look at this, it says Isabella is 11,000. So if we go back and look at our spreadsheet, you'll see, see Isabella, there's 6,000 here. Then we have a thousand here, so that makes it seven. And then another 4,000, that makes it 11,000. And that's exactly what we get right here for Isabella. Now, the reason we get this Isabella Jennifer Olivier here, this list of names, is because right now the sales rep column is in row dimensions. So all the other columns where you don't apply a function are basically dimension columns. You'll hear different terminology for this. So instead of metric, in a lot of cases, people may call this values. So you may hear metric, value, measure, all of those would be this metric types. And then we have this dimensions. So you'll hear people call it dimension, group, breakdown, all of those are the same thing. So right now we have this row dimension. So sales rep is here. Therefore, we get a list of salespeople in different lines like this, in different rows. Now, if I switch that sales rep, I'm gonna click on that sales rep and switch it to region column. Then now our dimension in rows is region. So you can see now it's gonna list different regions I have, west and midwest, and then how much the total is for each. So again, if we look at Midwest, it says 16,800, which is basically, if we look here, take this plus this plus this, we're gonna get that particular amount. So let's go back to this. So let's make this a little bigger so it's easier to see what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and go from the setup to the style menu. And here we can basically change colors, size of text and all kinds of stuff like that. So you can spend hours and hours just redesigning things, but I'm gonna keep this simple. So I'll just go here to this table labels. You can see currently it's under size 12. So I'll open this and make it like size maybe 18. And of course, if that's not big enough, you can go back and scroll up and down and choose whatever size you want this to be. I'll just go like 20 for now, that's good enough. You can of course apply a different font, a different color, etc. But for me, this is good enough. I'll just stay with this. We can go here and resize this section. 
Now let's say the sales amounts, we want them to look more like a dollar amount. So I'll go back to setup menu. I'm gonna go back to our metrics and click on that same pen to be able to modify this. So I'll click on this. And here is where we choose what function we're gonna apply to this. Now here you can see we have type and it says number. So I'm gonna open that type and switch this to currency. And then we'll choose what type of currency this should be. So I'll go USD for this. And now you can see how that applies that format for us. And also you can see how this says sales. So I can go here as a name and type like total sales or something like that. And that would be basically the header we're gonna get on top here. And with that same type of logic, if you don't like that this says region, you could just go here next to this region, click on this ABC and change the name right here. I'm okay with region, I'll just leave it like that. As a matter of fact, let's just switch this, click on this and switch this to sales wrap. And you can see we got our list of sales wraps. Now, what I can do, I can add more than one dimension at the same time. You can also have more than one metric at the same time if you wanted to. So let's start with adding more than one dimension. What I can do here, I can click add dimension. You can also just drag it from here and bring it over, that works too. So I'll just click add dimension here and let's just add region as another dimension. So now you can see what happens. We have sales wrap and then we have region. So for example, you'll see that we have Olivia and West and it says 4,500. So for Olivia, there is only one region possibility. So if we go back to our data, you'll see, see we got Olivia and it's West, and then we have another Olivia and that's also West region. So therefore we just get one line with one total combined. Now, if we we'll look at Jennifer, you'll see for Jennifer, it gives us two regions. So we have Midwest and we have West. And again, if we go back here and look, you can see Jennifer, we got West, which is this 3200. And then we got Jennifer Midwest, which is this number. And I guess that's it. So you'll see, we're gonna get those totals for Jennifer. And then finally, if we look at Isabella, for example, Midwest, it says 10,000. If we go back and take a look, see we got Isabella Midwest here, another Isabella Midwest here. So combined, that makes it 10,000. So basically we get this breakdown where we have the wrap broken down by region. Now, right now, I only get what's the total for Midwest and what's the total for West for Jennifer. But what if I also wanna see what's this combined for both regions together? So what I can do here, I can scroll down here and click show subtotals. And now you'll see in addition to that breakdown, it also give us the total for that particular section. And the way this works, it goes by the order we have in this dimensions on the rows. So currently I have sales rep first, region second. So it's gonna take sales rep as the first order and it's gonna break it down by region as the next order. Now I can change that. I can go here and drag sales rep and put it below region. So now we got region first. So that's West and you can see the total for the whole region is 8,700. And then we break it down by wrap. So basically it goes by the order you put them in rows. Whatever's first takes the first priority, then the next one in your pivot table rows would be the next priority and so on. Now you might also want to have the overall total for all of these sales combined in your pivot table. And for that, you can go to this totals and also click on this show grand totals. And now you can see overall, we can get the grand total how much this is. Now currently, because both of these are under rows, it will basically list both regions and salespeople in different lines like this. So what we can do, we can take one of those and move it to columns. So for example, if I take that region and drag it from here to this columns section, now, regions are in columns, so it will basically take all the possible regions like Midwest and West and put them in different columns in this pivot table report. And then on the left, we have all the row dimensions, obviously, which is where we have salespeople, so it's gonna list those. And typically this would be a report that's easier to compare because now we can see the cross section like Isabella Midwest and there's the number. 
Now, finally, let's say this is the report you want to share. So we go here on top and rename this. So I'm just going to call this pivot table report, obviously call it whatever you want it to be. And then if I click on this view button, it will go to read only mode. So currently now we just have the report, but it's not going to show any of the tools we have to modify this particular pivot table report. Now at this point, if you want to share it with certain people, you can click on the share and basically just add people and decide what level of access you want to give them. So for example, if I choose this email, I can have that person as a viewer or editor. So if you want them to just read this report and that's it, viewer is what you want. If you want them to modify this report too, editor would be that. I'm gonna cancel this. I don't wanna share that, but that's typically what you would have done to share this report. Now for us, if we wanna go back and modify this, we're gonna click on this edit button and we're back to this so we can actually make modifications to this pivot table. And again, you can resize this, reposition it, whatever else you have to do. Maybe you want a title for this. So you'll go on top here, see this little text, click on that, throw a little something here and enter some text. And then of course you can change the size of this here in properties. So I can go here and make this much bigger, make it bold. You can of course change the color and whatever else you like. Maybe you want to also add a company logo so you can click image, grab the logo from your computer, put it someplace. So at this point, it's just design. You can design it however you want this to be and reposition things. So finally, the last thing I wanna mention here is updates. So currently this is the report we have. So what happens if we just go ahead and add more data to our spreadsheet? So I'm gonna go back to here and let's say we got another person here, Peter, and we'll do Midwest and have some number. So if we share this with somebody, they will be in view mode. So I'm gonna click on this view. So this is what they would see. Now, if they want to get an update, they can just go ahead, click on this more options here and refresh data. And see now, once I refresh it, Peter will show up with Peter's numbers. So it's not gonna update automatically just like that. You will have to refresh to go fetch the new data and refresh the report. But other than that, this is it. So you just add your data, you refresh it, it will just append it to your report. So one last thing I wanna do in this pivot table before we move to larger data sets, let's actually change a couple of things here. So I'm gonna go back to this pivot table. For now, I'll just take the column dimension out of here to just make it easy to understand. So I'll just go ahead and X out of this. So we now just have total sales by salesperson. So now what I can do, I can add a secondary dimension here just to show you an example of that. Now, again, remember with secondary dimensions, we wanna choose a column and we wanna choose a function. So you're gonna to have to go back to your data and figure out what column you're gonna do and what function you're gonna apply. You could actually reuse the same column multiple times too. So I could have sales column again with a different function. So to give you an example of that, I can add a metric here again, and I'm gonna use that same sales column. So now it's just gonna repeat it twice because both are doing sum, but I can take the second one, click on this sum, and change it to average. And maybe for this too, I'll go ahead and change it to currency and do USD. And now we have sales and average side by side. And obviously you can just rename this to average, just like that. And there it is, we got average and total side by side. Now, another thing that by default is available in metrics is record count. So basically the number of lines. So if I click on this add metric and do this record count option, 
it will basically just give you the number of lines. So now you can see, see Isabella three, Jennifer two. So if I go back and take a look, you'll see, see one, two, three, Isabella, Jennifer one, two, and that's exactly what it does. So that's your record count. So as you can see, I can have multiple metrics at the same time. Now what I'll do here, I'll remove the average. So I'm gonna X out of this. And then let's go back and add region to dimension. And you can see now what happens because we have two metrics. Let's make this a little bigger. So now you can see what happens because we have more than one metric, it will take the region Midwest and then break it down to sales and record count. And then the same thing for the next region and so on and so on. So now that we understand all the basic concepts of using pivot tables and how it works with our data, let's move to actually using larger data set. And as we do that, we'll go over some new things. So let me just remove a couple of things here. I'm gonna remove this record count. Maybe we'll just keep it like this, that's fine. So I'm gonna keep this one as is. And let's just now add another pivot table. Maybe we'll put it below this, but we'll use another data set for this. So what I'll do here, I'll go under this resources. And here you can see manage added data sources. So you can see this is that data source I did the first time, which is that learn tab. I'm gonna keep that and then I'm gonna add another data source. So again, we'll choose Google Sheets. Here we're gonna choose the file. And this time I'm gonna go to a different tab called data, which is basically just to explain you what we're doing here. This is this tab called data, and this is gonna be our data set this time. Great, so I have that selected. So I'll go ahead and click add, add to report. So at this point we can add now another pivot table. So I'm gonna go to insert and I'm gonna find pivot table again. Click someplace, maybe resize it. You'll see that it automatically picked that particular source of data, the one that I just did. Now, if it didn't pick the right data source at this point, you could click here and make sure you switch to the right source. But for me, it's already the right source, so I'm just gonna keep it like that. So again, let's start by choosing a metric. So I'll just go with that same sales amounts and summing sales. So again, I'll go to metrics, click on this, switch it to sales column. It's under sum right now, which is okay, but I'll click on that and make sure that we switch this to currency. Currently it chose to do store as a dimension and category column as column. I'm gonna remove the column. And for row, I'm gonna choose that same sales wrap column. And that should give us our totals for each rep. Again, if we want to resize this, we can go to style. I'm gonna scroll down to this labels and make this font bigger. You can resize this. If you feel like you don't have enough space for both of these reports on the same page, you can always go here and add another page. So now I have page one and page two. And then I can take this page one report, this pivot table, click on this, cut it, and then I'll go to second page and right click and paste. Maybe resize this. I'll probably want to add grand total here. So I'll click show grand total. There it is, so we got total sales by sales wrap. And obviously we can use some dimensions as well, like region, the same way I did it before. And you'll see how that gives us total sales by region for each rep. So now let's do something with dates. So just to show you what we're dealing with in our actual data set, we have this dates. 
These are just individual dates of transactions. Let's go ahead and come back here. So for now, I'm gonna replace the sales rep in rows with that date column. So I'll go here, choose that date. And you'll see what it did. It basically just lists all those dates and gives us the total for each day, which is okay. But typically when you have bulk data like this, you would want to kind of group those dates and get it by month, by year, something like that. So let's do an example of that. So what I would do here, I would click on this little icon next to this date, go to this date type, go here. And here we have options like year, quarter, month, etc. So for now, I'm just gonna go year. And you'll see how it took all that bulk data and we just grouped it by year here. Now, obviously, if you want the year and month, you can go here and switch it to year month, which is right here. I'm not a big fan of this year month together like this. So what I like to do, I like to go back here and just choose year. And to make this report a little nicer, what we can do, we can add the same column again. So right now I have this date as a year, but I can go under dimensions and add another dimension. And this time I'm gonna choose that same date column from here. But for this, I'll click on this little pen and go back to this and choose month instead of year, or you can go quarter or something. And see, now we have this better separation between our year and month instead of having that mix all in one column. So this way, it's a little easier to see the separation between your years and months. So let's just make this font size a little smaller. And I'll also just resize this pivot table here to just include more information on a single screen. So as you can see, we have a few years here and that's a pretty big table. Now you may have noticed that right now when we look at this year and month, it goes like 2022, which is okay, but then months are kind of in a weird order. It goes like May and then January and then April and so on. So let's try to change that. So what I can do, I can go here and scroll down and over here we have sort section. So currently you see we have sorting order first to be date year descending, which is great. So it goes like 2022, 2021. So that's good, I'm gonna keep that. But what I'll do, I'll add the second sorting order here instead of currently being under sales, I'll switch it to date month. And for that one, I'm gonna do ascending. And this way you'll see how it goes from January and keeps going up and the same from January, 2021, it goes all the way down until December and so on. So that's probably what you would expect when you do something like this. So as you can see, that's possible. Let's go ahead and get rid of month for now. So I'm gonna scroll up and exit out of this. So we'll just have year to year by region. So you can move this with your keyboard by basically just pressing up, down, left, right. So currently we have this year to year by region report. What if I wanna have an option for our users to filter this report to a particular sales rep? So what I can do, I can go up here and add a control. And here I'm gonna choose what type of control that's gonna be. So we have different types of options we can choose for the filter. So for example, see there's a date range filter, there is a dropdown list. So let's start with this dropdown list. So I'm just gonna place this here. And then you wanna choose what column you wanna use for filtering. So currently see it picked region. So I'm gonna go here and as this control field, I'm gonna click on this and switch it to a different column, like sales rep. And what's gonna happen now if I, for example, share this report, let's go to view so we can see 
what that's going to look like. So we'll have this report that gives us our total by year. We can open this filter on top and see it gives us different people and what their respective totals are. But if we want to, for example, see Olivia's total, we can click only Olivia here. And basically that will just filter this and just show us Olivia's totals. And then we can open this and choose Olivia and John, maybe. And that will show Olivia's and John's totals combined. And then to easily just get back to all, you can just right click here and do reset. And this is now back to all salespeople. So this is one filter. You could have multiple filters at the same time. If we go back to modify this, see currently I just have this one control sales rep. I can go back to this add a control and add more. So maybe I want to add category as an option too. So I'm going to do another drop down list. And for this one, instead of region, we'll select category. And just for a second, let's just go back to our data. This is what we have in that category column. So basically different categories of product. Now this doesn't exactly look like it matches this one very well. So I can click on this one. Now, usually when you just click up and down arrow, it just jumps like this. But if you want to do minor adjustments, you can just press shift and do arrow up and down and it goes a little bit at a time. So this way you can do fine tuning and make sure you position that exactly where you want us to go. So now I got two drop downs, one for category, one for sales rep. You could also add a control for date range, assuming you have dates in your data. So I'll just put it in here. And the way it knows what column to use for this type of control is based on if I just click back on this pivot table. See in this pivot table on top here, we have this date range dimension and currently it auto selected the date column. So because that's the column that's selected here, when I add this control for a date range selector, it automatically knows that's the column it should use to filter your dates. So at this point now, if I go back to view this, you could filter by rep, by category. You can also filter by date. So here we can open this. It's going to give us this nice range selector. See, we have this auto range right now. You can go here and choose something like last 14 days, last seven days, last 28 days, or a lot of other options here. But we can also do something like fixed. And then with fixed, we can just pick our own dates. So I can say, let's start from November 2020. I'll pick the first here and then go until November 2021st, something like that. So I'll just have this. Actually, let's go one month before. Let's go October 31st. So I'm gonna press apply. And that should just filter that to that particular range of dates. So if you want like a range filter, you can do this. And then obviously we can use all these other filters too. So if I want to basically choose a particular salesperson, I can go here and grab Isabella. And that's Isabella's total for this particular range. And then obviously we can also go here and choose a category. And there's our report. So if you have multiple pages in this report, because now I have this first page that has this first report that I did, and I have this second page that has this other report, you may want to change these names instead of this untitled pages. So I'm going to click edit. For my first page here, I'm going to click on this one. Then I'll go to page and click manage pages. And here you're going to see we have those pages. So I'm going to click here and rename this. And also rename this one, obviously. And obviously this is going to look much better now. So I want to just reset all these filters for now. So I'll just click on this reset button. 
And finally, let's go over how to add a calculated field. To do an example of that, currently in our data, we have sales and we have cost. You may want to calculate the difference between sales and cost and basically call it profit or something. So I'm gonna go back here. And here you can see, this is the list of columns we have in our data. So if you don't see this, then you just wanna check this icon here. See, if I uncheck this data and this properties, those things don't show up here. If I click on this data, that just pops back up. And this is that data set I had. So you can obviously switch between that learn and this data. I'm gonna choose this one. And I'll click on this add a field option. So this is where we can add calculated fields. So I'll just name this profit. And right here, we're gonna do the formula to calculate this. So when you do formulas here, make sure you don't add an equal sign in the beginning. Just start your formula. So I'm gonna start sum and open parentheses. And we need the column we're gonna sum. So you can just drag your columns from here. So I can take the sales, drag it here within this parentheses. So I'll do that, minus, sum, and I'll grab this cost column, drag it over here. And again, this is profit, that's the column name. So I'll just go ahead and hit save. Click done. And now here, if I click on this pivot table, so we can modify that, if I go to this metrics, see currently I have sales, and it amounts to, well, I wanna be able to see the total for all of these totals here, so I'm gonna scroll down here under this totals and check show grand total for columns two. So you can see for this particular report in this pivot table, we got 8.4 million total sales. So let's now go ahead and take the sales column and replace it with that new column we just did that's called profit. And there it is, that's now our profit after that calculation so we can use it as a field. And you'll see that when I go here to modify this, I can't pick a function because the function was the function that I did when I created the field and I did sum. So we can of course change the name of this field and also do some sort of number formatting to make it dollar amounts. And that's how you create a calculated field in your pivot tables. Now, finally, let me go over a couple of more things here and that should be enough for this video. So let's talk about this expand collapse. So what I'll do here, I'll add another dimension here in addition to the year. So I'll click add dimension and I'll use something like store as a dimension. So now it's gonna take that year and further break it down by store. And this is typically the way this looks. Now what we can do, we can turn on this expand collapse. Now you can see now that that store doesn't show up anymore. And what happens here, it's just inside of this 2022. So if I click on this little plus, it will expand this and show both. But then if I click on that minus, now we go back to just showing the year. So if you want this functionality, you can turn that on and that's how that works. Finally, let me for now remove this column dimension for a second, so this is easier to understand. And currently I just have year to year and then I have profit. Now obviously we can then click on this plus, get the breakdown by store as well. And what I'll do here, I'll go to this metric and I'll use this optional metrics. So right now we just did metric and we did multiple metrics too, but we can also add optional metrics. So I'm gonna add another column here. So let's say we'll do record count. And as you can see, it doesn't really show up in the report. Now let's go to the view. So this is how people who view this report are gonna see this. So what they can do here, they can go over this and you can see we have this little icon here, optional metrics. We can click on that and then add record count as a metric to this as well. So basically with this setup, our user can click here and decide which metrics they want to display. 
And that covers pretty much all the fundamental skills you need to be able to create a pivot table. So the most important parts here are learning the core concepts and understanding how pivot tables interact with your data sets, which basically starts by choosing the right metric or value column and applying the right function to that column. And then you take that total and start breaking it down by other fields. So as usual, leaving comments, what else you'd like to know about pivot tables. Maybe there is something else you want me to cover here that I didn't go over. And as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.